Welcome or welcome back to Icarus for week 140 update and the team's project clinic number two. The week 140 update comes with tons of new improvements, including a battery powered ice box, which gives you an option to carry food for a lot longer without it spoiling. As well as that, tons of new battery and portable electrical equipment, which really, really helps on some of those long raids where you're going through cold areas or dark, deep, and dingy areas that you're going to be going through for a considerable amount of time and not going to be able to get back to your base. This will allow expeditions to last much longer. So if you do have a main base at one end of the map and you want to be heading off to the other without too many stops in between, this is going to help you do that. I love some of the electrical items that they've added and we have a little bit more news on the Prometheus DLC. So if that sounds good, subscribe to the channel and stick around for much more Icarus. Now, first things first, if you don't know what their project clinic is, it is basically involving the team in the gameplay themselves. So they experience the frustrations that we do and turn that frustration into a direct action and outcome that makes a better game. So they'll play through the game as a normal player and figure out what makes things a little bit more difficult and what is going to help improve the general play style of the player. So it's quite good. It's a great way to improve on the game. And doing that, they've come up with a lot of awesome changes for the week 140 update. Now, the first thing of that is a battery powered ice pack. So this ice pack is quite cool and it's a featured item this week. You can craft it at the fabricator and it adds six inventory slots like most backpacks do, but also chills everything that is inside it. So drastically extending the spoil time on a lot of items that you'll be carrying. The design is intended to have this backpack to provide a specialized solution for long expeditions across the map when adequate freezer storage isn't available like it is back at your base. But the backpack does require stored electricity to operate, meaning you must charge between uses and you can do that at the charging station that was reintroduced a couple of months ago. Now, they did mention last week that they were going to introduce the Prometheus map expansion in this update, but the CEO, Dean Hall, has some words to say on that. So they did leave the Prometheus map empty so they could add and develop it further, and they were planning to release that as a free expansion this week, but they played through it and ended up doing an intensive project clinic, which is what we've just spoke about, and they're taking an extra week to add even more content, both to the base game and the Prometheus DLC map. The key aspect of the studio development is for senior leadership to do full playthrough runs with no cheats, experiencing our games just as the customers do. This is incredibly time intensive, but extremely important for our aim of making better games. And this has been instrumental in driving Icarus forward. So we have spoke about the past with the project clinics where we use these intensive playthroughs to highlight issues missing content or qol changes when they rapidly iterate to solve as many problems as we can so we use prometheus playthrough this week for that purpose and to get the additions out before we release the expansion to prometheus once these two updates are out we will focus on the next installments on icarus as well as the next freeja may updates if you have enjoyed what we do, please consider leaving a review and picking up some of the DLCs. Our studio spends all of the money we make developing on this game. Also, there is no dividends, so all our income goes into making the game. And that was a message from CEO Dean Hall about why the Prometheus update isn't there this week. So more things that they found from the clinic highlights were quite a few adjustments including a lot to emphasize more on moving around and the general infrastructure of the setup for long-term missions and they'll need more of an introduction to that kind of long-term long-term mission and going out over longer periods in the prometheus area so that is why they've decided to add these before and it will make things a little bit smoother prometheus is a sort of hardcore element of the map but I'm assuming that they have played through and realized that it is a little bit too hardcore without those elements of being able to travel for long distances with the items that you need. So I'm glad that they've taken the time to experiment with that and add them now, rather than the frustration of not being able to do certain things in Prometheus. So one of the first things that they noticed is the main menu flow. 
and when you open up Icarus, you don't see your main character on the screen anymore. Now you'll see the redesigned menu, which is here as you can see. The old design did not clearly convey the different game modes available to you and added an unnecessary step in the process of getting into a session. The new update aims to amplify and simplify the processes that get you into a game faster. As well as that, they've added a new workshop only resource, and that is Hydrazine. It's a new gas resource collected from space and compressed into canisters for you to purchase from the orbital workshop. And these are one use items that cannot be refilled. So if you take these down and use it, that is it. You will need to buy another one. So they're not going to be too expensive to purchase. So now there's two items that are powered by the Hydrazine, and that is the MXC cooker and MXC heater. The cooker provides all the same recipes as the potbelly stove does, but doesn't require a sheltered use. And the heater provides substantial heat for a small device, making it perfect for night or Arctic crossings. So they will add more hydrazine resources in the future that are going to benefit from that fuel source. And I do like the idea of having just a small one-time purchasable heat source that is going to work nice and easily especially when you're later stage in the game you've got enough ren you've got enough exotics to buy what you need to get in and get a mission done they've also added portable biofuel generators which will help with power needs when you are on the go so the portable biofuel generators will provide 2000 watts of power and a light to carry and are considerably cheaper than the other large biofuel generators which do take a hell of a lot of resources to get together they're going to be ideal for powering electric mining drills so if you are out and you find some resources rather than building up a whole base around a deep electric mining drill you can take a portable generator with you and get stuck in without that need which is great news they've also added a whole host of battery powered equipment such as a battery powered lantern spotlights and cave lights so these things are pretty much as the name suggests flashlight with different illumination spotlights which can light up large areas and cave lights that are ideal for well lighting up caves there's also been some item mesh updates for existing items which in needed of a refresh such as the ghillie suit hunter armor biofuel generator and charging station so these will look better and work better in their places now uh, rather than clipping and going into terrain and stuff like that they're just going to look a bit better when they're placed on certain items which is good so there's also been a whole host of workshop balance and price adjustments because of obviously the hydrazine being added and a few other things in there over the course of the last few weeks so there's been minor price adjustments to make sure there's consistency among items of similar quality and the minor balance adjustments to more accurately reflect status of items in the game and certain instances their readability so they've reduced workshop repair kits to be the same price as repairing in orbit adjusted lark well bolt price and reduced replication costs from 50 to 10 bringing it in line with workshop arrows of the same tier they've also adjusted the Larkwell sickle price as it was far costlier than actual value to the player the reduced workshop biofuel canister replication cost as it no longer felt appropriate with the introduction of hydrazine and workshop pickaxes have had a single stat for mining yield which helps avoid confusion when comparing them and they've made slight tweaks to workshop hammer stats they've also reorganized the bow tab to have clear progression of arrow types and bows themselves and buffed the lockwell -well knife attack speed to make its high cost appropriate for the benefits that it will provide they've also added some small changes to stove proxy meshes and lighting itself so they've adjusted the bio potbelly and electric stoves alongside the mxc cooker to basically make it look better when you are cooking something pots and pans with ingredients will appear based on what's actually being crafted and it's done to better reflect what's going on in the devices in the game world and they want to do more things like that in the future to add to that realism aspect to make just things look better with a qol basically fixed there it's going to make your cooking and applications of cooking look more realistic as you're going through which is quite cool and it will feel much more rewarding they've also made some lighting updates and made light sources look a little bit different so deployables with flames like standing torches candles and campfire have been adjusted so they feel much more atmospheric due to some of the changes made items may 
change the performance a little bit more. So do bear that in mind. Now, they're also finally wrapping up developments on the no sector and they're finalizing the free update. Now, this free update does come as part of a DLC. So if you don't have that DLC, it will not be included. So it is a free update to those that have already purchased the New Frontiers DLC or if you've got the special edition of Icarus that already comes with it. But it's currently on sale at the moment, the New Frontiers expansion, for $14.99 down from $25.99, so a big 40% discount there. So basically the Null Sector is a hardcore version of the game and it's going to include five new operations that have a new exploration mechanic and new mutated creatures and a new giant creature which is quite cool and as mentioned it is basically towards a hardcore survival map at the end of it so it's going to be a tough one to go through now there is a note as well about their revenue and dlc strategy so i would highly recommend checking the notes in the description down below if you do want to check that out it is quite interesting. It's very long-winded about how and where their money basically goes just to show people what the cost of things are as they do feel that finances in the gaming industry are pretty much a closely kept secret. So it's nice to see how things are being spent and just basically showing they're not raking in tons and tons of money at the expense of players and forgetting about the game, which is a nice thing to show really. Now, if you are enjoying Icarus, make sure you leave it a review. It does help the team out. And I would highly recommend getting the New Frontiers DLC. Definitely worth it. Some cool maps on there. And I'm looking forward to the release of the Hardcore Prometheus Zone. What do you guys think, though? Are you excited for this update? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, though, I've been Wired. You guys have been awesome. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.